Everyone knows and loves these little bricks. And perhaps you have other parts in your life that you would consider 3D printing. There's only one problem though. FDM 3D printed parts look 3D printed. Because of the layer by layer buildup, you are able to see the path the printer took in the outer walls and infill of the object. But what if I told you there was a better way? There are key things you can do to make your part look more commercial, manufactured, and just overall less 3D printed. Here's how to bridge the gap and maximize the surface finish of your 3D prints. I'm gonna break this down into three different categories, which I think of as the three P's of 3D printing. That is preparation, print settings, and post-processing. First up, preparation. Before you even begin slicing, it's important to select a model that is optimized for 3D printing, as much as possible at least. There are a ton of key things you can consider, but these are the biggest ones I find to be the most helpful. Thin walls or generally small features will look best when greater than one millimeter. And keeping features around a multiple of your line width can help because your printer won't have to fill in a lot of gap between walls. For a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, this would mean keeping small areas to around 0.8, 1.2, or 1.6 millimeters. Of course, if you aren't designing or modifying the part yourself, you'll have less control here. Just be on the lookout for small areas that might be a challenge to print. Another item to consider are fillets and steeply rounded surfaces on the top and bottom of your parts. The more non-linear areas there are, the greater chance the layer lines will be visible, thus calling your print out as 3D printed. If you're making your own design, Maker's Muse has an excellent video going over why chamferts are actually superior to fillets. I'll have that linked below. Last step for model selection is considering how and if supports will be used. For example, if I wanted to find a chess pawn model, and I found these two, the one on the right wouldn't require support but the one on the left likely would just due to the overhangs in the design. Getting into the habit of looking at a geometry and visualizing the layer by layer buildup to create it will help you to determine if it will print well. Also the table of line types in slicers like Bamboo Studio or Prusa Slicer will help with this visualization. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see a more in-depth video on how to maximize the usefulness of this slicer tool. Okay, enough about the design aspects. Let's talk about what we're all crazy for, filament. When trying to make our 3D prints look less 3D printed, the material selected can have a huge impact, and there are a ton of options on the market. But first, I should issue a slight disclaimer here. Everything I'm going over in this video is dealing with aesthetics. Different materials will provide different mechanical and chemical properties that I won't go into. Basically, everything that I'm going over is mostly geared towards PLA and PETG. Now, on to the options. Filaments with textures such as matte, silky, or glittery can hide layer lines and sort of trick the eye into seeing a uniform surface. Looking at makes on websites like Thingiverse or Printables will help you find the filament that is perfect for the project you're working on. Plus, once you do find a filament that you like, I'd recommend printing a Benchy or some small test print to help you get a feel for what the filament looks like on your printer. My favorite is this CaliCat because it's quick, shows a lot of small features, and well, I just really like cats. Yes, I have too many of them. No, you can't stop me. Last step for preparation is choosing a build surface to print on. With options like glass, smooth PEI, textured, and satin sheets, you can achieve many different looks and textures. To hide the most lines, I print on a textured PEI sheet, but if I need a smooth gloss finish, I'll use a smooth sheet. This just depends on the look you're going for. Just make sure your first layer calibration is spot on to minimize any kind of warpage, elephant's foot, or anything else that will give away your part as 3D printed. Now that we've found a model, selected a filament, and decided what build surface to print on, it's time to talk about print settings. Within the slicer, we can change a few patterns and enable a few key features to get different results. The first I want to address is layer height. This one is a bit obvious, but the lower the layer height, the more layers will be present, and ideally, the less noticeable the layer lines will be. You will be limited based on your printer's capability, but generally around a 0.15 to 0.2 millimeter layer height will give good results while keeping print times manageable. Next is patterns. Almost every slicing software will give you the ability to alter the path your 3D printer will take for infill and the top and bottom of the model you are printing. By adjusting the top and bottom pattern or direction, you can drastically affect how the outer surface finish of your part looks. When I have a part that I am trying to make look less 3D printed, I like to use a line base pattern like monotonic or zigzag and align the printing angle with the part geometry. 
For example, when making this dice stand, I changed the infill angle from 45 to 0 degrees and the lines now print across the top surface rather than on an angle. You can use the adjustment of these patterns and angles in many ways, so experiment and find what works best for your part. Another setting to hide lines on the top surface of your part is ironing. When enabled, this moves your heated nozzle back over the model to melt the top layer and produce a smooth finish. Do make sure your nozzle is as clean as possible when doing this, especially with lighter colored filaments. You don't want any residue from your previous print messing up that smooth surface. The last setting I wanted to cover is fuzzy skin. This can be used on a full model to create an organic, fiber-like texture, or it can be used in certain parts of a model to generate a more grippy texture. This feature can hide layer lines and take your prints one step further to looking less like traditional FDM prints. Now that your part is off the build plate, perhaps it still doesn't look the way you want it. You could always go back into your slicer and start tweaking and do a couple of other iterations, or you can start post-processing. The most straightforward way to do this is by sanding, painting, or coating. Essentially what you want to do is sand down the part to a roughly uniform surface and apply enough coats of primer or paint to fill any remaining gaps. You can also use something like XTC3D or epoxy resin. Next is using a heat gun. This works especially well for getting rid of stringing, but beware of warpage. Too much heat can make PLA and PETG curl like no other. Move around the geometry evenly without staying in one place for too long. Also, adjust the heat gun temperature and fan speed starting on the lowest settings and gradually working your way up. The last post-processing technique I wanted to cover is vapor smoothing. The most widely known method here is smoothing ABS with acetone. This process has been around for a while, so I'll be super brief. This is done by placing an acetone-soaked towel inside a container, placing the ABS printed part on a raised platform within, and covering the container, letting the fumes work their magic. It should be noted that during this process, the container should not be completely sealed. More and more acetone vapor will build up, and we don't want to have a pressure problem. You can also use isopropyl alcohol to smooth PVB. Essentially use the same process as the ABS acetone bath, but just know PVB may take longer. You can also smooth PVB by applying the isopropyl alcohol directly onto the surface, either by spraying or brushing. By selecting the right model and filament, dialing in your print settings, and post-processing as necessary, you can get a more and more refined print with each iteration. But what did I miss? Do you have other suggestions on how to make your 3D printed parts look less 3D printed? Leave them in the comments below. And if you have projects that look particularly disguised or don't look 3D printed, feel free to add those on our social media platforms. We'd love to see what you're working on. I'm Wyatt, and this is The 3D Printing Zone.